Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is my first ever q and I have been doing a lot of gaming videos uh, for, I'd say like on and off for the past couple of years, but I've never actually sat down and done an actual Q&A video. I am gonna start doing vlogs and uploading probably, my goal is once a week. We'll see how that goes. Um, I already started vlogging today. I'm actually, after I film this and edit this, I'm also going to be editing um, a little bit of my vlog today. So definitely stay tuned for that. So I asked you guys on Instagram and on Twitter to send me some questions. So I have them in front of me. I have a lot, but yeah, here we go. My first q and I'm excited. Okay, our first question is from Mika Veli, and he says, top five favorite games since childhood. Um, Spyro, Crash Bandicoot, Call of Duty. I I'm gonna like lump Call of Duty and Halo together. Since childhood, Minecraft. Yeah, Spyro, Crash, Call of Duty, Halo, Minecraft. Definitely my top five. That was, that was pretty easy, not gonna lie. Okay, the next one is gonna be Jeffrey. Random, but if you could only take three items with you on a deserted island, what would they be? Okay, so I've honestly always thought about this because I've always thought that it'd be super cool to just, even if it's like for three days, see how I would do to survive on an island on my own. I personally think I could do pretty good. I've watched a lot of Survivor and a lot of Man vs. Wild. Um, yeah, I, I think I could do it. Flint, obviously you need that to start a fire. A machete. Need to be able to chop coconuts open easy. I need some form of like entertainment. A book, the Bible. I feel like a book would be good, but it'd have to be a big book. The dictionary? No, no, not the dictionary. A soccer ball? Yeah, I'd, maybe, maybe a soccer ball because then whenever I'm there, I can just, you know, oh wait, oh, but what if it, what if it pops? Oh, oh no. Okay, fine. Maybe, maybe we'll just go with like, I don't know, a pot. <laughs> to cook things in. <laughs> yeah, there we go. We'll just go with the basic survival. Cause uh, uh yeah, we'll, we'll just go with that. So a machete, flint and a pot. <laughs> Corey asked, what is your favorite item of the new merch that's coming soon? Uh, hoodie, shirts, hats, etc. So I am gonna be making merch. Um, I've been working on it with complexity. It's been a little difficult to get things going, everything with COVID and things like that. I'd have to say the hoodies, there's two, but it has a saying, be the spark. Uh, that means a lot to me. So yeah, I'm really excited for merch. So Justified asked me on Twitter, what influenced you to start streaming and content creating? Back in 2012, when I was playing Black Ops 2, me and my friend, Danny from high school, we both played soccer together and we found out that we both loved Call of Duty. We actually learned how to quick scope by watching YouTube videos. We ended up also making gaming Instagrams in order to meet other girls that we could play video games with. But I ended up finding out about Twitch through gaming Instagram because of all also like other YouTubers and then they'd be like, hey, I'm gonna be live, come watch me here. And I was like, what is this Twitch thing? So I went there and I started watching and I thought it was so entertaining. I ended up gaining a little bit of a following on Instagram. And when I say a little bit, I mean like probably like a hundred or 200 or something, I don't know. I would just post a bunch of like really cringy quotes and like gaming references. I don't know, it's really, is really bad. I deleted majority of them. Um, there's probably still some more if you guys wanna go back that far and just laugh at me. Yeah, so I think at the end of the day, um, it was just other creators. Other creators definitely inspired me to uh, want to pick up streaming and content creating. What is your favorite painting that you've ever made? And has there ever been one that you wish that you still had? It's kind of hard as far as like painting goes because I do have a favorite art piece, but it's not actually a painting, but I'm gonna have that as my answer, I think. Um, it's actually a bottles, uh, it's like a charcoal, it's a charcoal drawing of Dr. Pepper bottles, but I had to, we weren't allowed to have any logos um, in our high school contest. Just put it on um, paper with uh, some charcoal. So yeah, that's definitely my favorite art piece that I've ever done in my entire life. And I think it always will be. And that piece of art really showed me my potential when it came to uh, creating art. So yeah, and then uh, the other part of that question is, has there ever been one that you wish you still had? That'd probably be my most recent one, to be honest. I spent a lot of time on it. Um, I actually made it for one of my subs. Um, and yeah, I'll put a I'll put a picture of it right there. <laughs> yeah, that one's probably my favorite as far as paintings go. Okay, so Alicia asked me on Twitter, what keeps you motivated for stream? Um, honestly, it's all of you guys. Um, anyone who comes out to my stream and hangs out with me, I love getting to know you guys. I love getting to just hang out 
play some games, um, make lots of jokes, hear about everyone's day. Um, I also, I've been able to get to know a lot of you guys really well and it, it makes me feel so good whenever I get to ask you guys, you know, like, hey, I heard about that job offer that you had, like, did you get it? And then if they, you know, say yes, then we can celebrate, you know, and if they say no, then we can encourage them. I love the community that I have um, that I found on Twitch. It's amazing and it's beautiful and I'm so excited for it to keep growing. Okay, Maddie asked, what's the best map slash game mode in Splitgate? Correct answer only. The really only correct answer is anything but Crag. Um, I'm not at all a fan of the map Crag. Yeah, Crab is, the Crag, 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 Crag is crap. Say that five times fast. But for real, the best game mode I would have to say is takedown. I think takedown is so much fun. I I feel like I could probably play takedown for hours and hours and hours and hours. So I'm gonna pick a map, like a takedown map, and it's gonna be golf for me. I like Charlie too, but I think golf is my favorite. 20 years from now, when you look back on everything you've done with content creation, what will you say is the best thing you did as a streamer? Gosh, 20 years from now, I feel like I'm going to be a streamer still for, I mean, I don't know how long, as long as I can, as long as it, you know, provides for me and I still have fun doing it. See myself doing this, I mean, at least for like a couple more years. Um, again, I don't know what the future looks like, but as far as things that I've done so far as a streamer, honestly, I think the best thing that I did as a streamer was take the leap of faith to go full time. I had about 22 hours left in my college degree, but Fortnite was also out at the same time. And I wasn't even able to do school part time with like being able to focus on on Fortnite and streaming. And I really wanted to take advantage of the opportunity that I had blowing up on stream and um, really, I just wanted to capitalize on it. I saw it as a really good opportunity and it was a little bit of a risk, but honestly it like completely paid off. Um, I've met so many amazing people. I've grown uh, to the point that I am. And yeah, I just, uh, I definitely would say that it would be like taking that leap of trusting myself and trusting the process. But aside from all of that, I would say the best thing that I've ever done um, like with my community is just um, getting to know them, getting to do any movie nights or, or game nights or um, just getting to know so many incredible people all around the world and getting to support them, um, host people, really anything and everything that comes to do with um, having a little bit of an impact on someone, um, a positive impact. Obviously, we always want to be a positive impact. It's going to be those relationships that I made. Like I, I met my boyfriend on on Twitch. I met my a lot of my, I have so many best friends that I've just made um, through Twitch and through video games. And I just think it's um, so incredible and so special. And it's always going to be the best thing that I've done is to be able to make all of those incredible connections. Like Paul, I've, I've made a zombie. I've made a really great connection with him. He's super, super awesome. I, I really appreciate him as a friend. Okay, the next question is from Topaz. How do you deal with toxicity either in game or in your stream? So majority of the time, I always just think that when people are toxic online, they're only doing that because of anonymity that they have online um, and the fact that they don't get to see any of the negative outcomes. I think that people who are toxic on video games are just trying to make up for things not going well in their life. So a lot of the times I do my best to, I guess, think of that and not really retaliate. But if someone is saying something that I absolutely don't agree with, I feel like it's my place to stand up for either myself or someone else. And I feel like it's right, I'm gonna do it. Um, I am going to speak my mind and um, I've done that a lot on my stream and I have never regretted any second that I have uh, I have done that and called someone out. And if they want to live with their toxicity, you know, and say that, you know what, I stand by what I said. I don't know. I think that uh, karma is a real thing uh, and it will come to bite them in the butt whenever, uh, you know, they're super toxic and affect people in a negative way. I do feel like it comes back to you. Dylan asked, if you weren't doing content creation, where do you think your life would be? I definitely think I would be pursuing a career in art. I don't really think that I'm made for a normal like nine to five job. I don't think I'd be able to do that. So selling my own art or just being involved at some point to some level um, with 
either art or even possibly in the back end of like a gaming community, whether that be like an organization, a company who like makes games or, you know, like a product, say like G Fuel, I could probably, I could totally see myself working for G Fuel behind the scenes, things like that. I definitely think that I would either be in the realm of art or gaming though. So Flown asks a really good question. When telling your parents slash IRLs that you stream video games, was it an awkward combo telling them that it's possible to make a living out of it when you went full time? How many IRLs don't know what you do for a living? Um, so I actually made an entire Excel spreadsheet whenever I was trying to tell my parents like, hey, I, I, this is how much I've made over the past like year. I have this much money saved up. I want to buy this apartment and this is what I love. This is what I stand for. As far as like things with my stream, I told them about how I want to be a positive influence on people all over the world. I let them know about how I've already been able to do that in different ways of being able to give back to the community. My dad really understood, I think a little bit faster than my mom because my dad played a lot of video games. So I think he understood a little bit more of how close you can get to someone and how much it can really impact you being involved in a gaming community. It took my mom, I think a little bit more. I had to explain how I make my money exactly and, and you know, how it all works with like donations and and subscriptions and and all things like that but at the end of the day they have been and always will be uh supportive of me um ever since i sat them down really mature way and i let them know like hey this is what i love um this is how i can provide for myself and i think this is what i want to do and i think they knew they kind of knew that school was just kind of meh for me i didn't really care too much for it but as far as um, IRLs, I'm not gonna lie, I don't know if I have any IRLs that uh, are not also gaming friends. I don't talk to anyone from my high school. I don't talk to really anyone in person who is not a gamer. Okay, so now I have to go on my phone for the rest of the questions um, from Instagram. So Iridium, my boy Ted, um, asked me what is one piece of advice that you'd give to all gaming creators when they are just starting their journey. So a lot of you guys also asked um, this question. He says one piece of advice. I, I can think of two. So the first thing is going to be play what game you love. Do what you love, not what you think is going to be popular or get you views. Because at the end of the day, if you are not having fun, that's going to translate to your viewers. They're going to see you're not having fun and they're not going to, that, that's not fun to watch. And then the second piece of advice would be treat every person that you come in contact with, anyone in your chat, treat them more than just a username in their chat because they are. They are a person, they have family, they have friends, they have things in their life that they're dealing with. Get to know your viewers, especially early on. It's very important because you're not going to be having like, hundreds of people coming to watch you whenever you're starting out. Those initial relationships that you can make with your viewers is so important to have a good base community. Shilster said, what motivates you to work hard even when you're not feeling it? Determination. A lot of the times I, I, I would never get anything done. I would never go to the gym. I'd never eat good. I'd never do anything if I had to rely on motivation because a lot of the times I wake up and I don't want to do anything except for watch TikTok and lay in bed and sleep and hang out with Obi, go outside for a bit, eat, sleep. Obi, outside, eat, sleep. That's all I would do um, if I had to rely on motivation because that's all that I would want to do. Determination and discipline, I feel like are something that you should lean on more than motivation uh, when it comes to really anything in your life that you want to get done. Okay, so our last question is from Alex uh, who asked me on Instagram, what do you miss most about playing competitive soccer? I'm a very competitive person. I love being competitive and competitive soccer was such a big part of my life that I think I just missed that. I missed that feeling of, you know, that anxiousness before a soccer game and the excitement whenever you score or, you know, whenever you win like a really big game. So I do actually play in a seven on seven league, which has been absolutely wonderful and amazing. And I love every single person that I get to play with. I get to play with my brother. I get to play with my dad, a lot of my friends, some people from complexity. It's super good for me. And uh, it definitely makes up for the lack of actually playing competitive soccer anymore. Okay, well, that is going to wrap up our YouTube video Q&A for the very first time. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it all the way this far, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Let me know what you guys want to see from me in the future. I would love to do more IRL things, not just taking things from my stream 
and just re-uploading it on my YouTube channel. Um, I will do that sometimes. Say if it's a really good game, I'll put, it on, I'll put it on YouTube just in case you guys miss it. But I do also want to do more behind the scenes things for a lot of the people who do also watch my stream. You know, I want to, uh, I want to be able to provide some different content. But anyways, be sure to like the video and comment down below. Let me know what videos you want to see from me next. What sort of things you want me to do in my vlogs. Speaking of vlogs, look out for those. I'm about to go edit one of them, or at least one day. I'm probably going to put a couple different days all together so that it's not just a one day video kind of thing. I will have all of my socials linked down below in the description box. But without further ado, don't forget to be the spark that lights a fire and a passion in other people. See you next time. Bye.